The early 2000s produced some of the best talent that the NFL has ever seen. From Tom Brady to LaDainian Tomlinson, the league was stacked with superstars, some of which were early draft picks, such as Tomlinson, who went 5th overall in 2001. But others were selected in the later rounds, such as Tom Brady, 199th overall in 2000. But some players weren't so lucky. Undrafted players are often some of the most talented players in the league, playing every game trying to prove 31 teams wrong. Perhaps one of the best known undrafted players was Tony Romo. Undrafted in 2003 to the leading passer for the most historic franchise ever. This is the story of Tony Romo. Romo was born in San Diego but soon moved back to Wisconsin. And his first love was basketball. Like many kids, he fell in love with the sport playing in the driveway for hours on end. It's what he always wanted to do professionally. He and his dad eventually came to terms with the fact that Tony was too small and too slow to compete at the next level on the court. But being athletic and competitive, he wouldn't let those traits go to waste. As in high school, Romo transitioned to football, where he was the backup quarterback, something Romo would quickly get used to. For Tony's second year, his coach suggested a position change from QB to tight end. Romo turned it down, wanting one more chance to earn the starting spot, and he did, and the rest is history. Romo was ready to make a jump to college football, where everyone is fighting for a spot to compete in the NFL. He attended Eastern Illinois, a small school for NFL talent. Player alumni before Romo included zero NFL players. In his time at the school, Romo was great, with 2,583 yards in his first year and 27 touchdowns. No surprise that he broke all the school records reachable, as he finished with 560 completions and almost 8,000 yards, along with 82 touchdowns in three years. And it was on to the NFL for Tony Romo. Romo wasn't invited to the Combine as a player to showcase his skills. Instead, he was invited to throw to the other prospects. He wasn't a highly touted prospect. Being from a small school, he was projected as a late round pick. However, the draft night was more than disappointing for Romo as he went undrafted. Being an undrafted free agent sounds pretty sweet, right? You can pick between any teams that have offered you a contract, but with that it means limited opportunities. When you're undrafted and cut, chances are you're not going to get another opportunity. And that was factoring in to Romo's decision between the two places he was offered a contract, the Denver Broncos or the Dallas Cowboys. So Romo looked at the depth charts and ultimately made the decision that he had a better chance to beat out Quincy Carter and Chad Hutchinson than he did Jake Plummer. So Romo joined fellow Eastern Illinois alumni Sean Payton in Dallas. The head coach of that team was the great Bill Parcells. Romo said that was another one of the things that factored into his decision the most, as he wanted to learn from Parcells as much as he could. Romo earned the number two spot. However, his main role was the holder on the field goal kicks and the extra points. But as years went on, he got more and more competition. When it was the highest was in 2005, when the Cowboys signed former first overall pick Drew Bloodsoe, a player that had just recently moved on from the New England Patriots after Tom Brady took over and ran with the starting job. In 2006, Sean Payton, who moved on to be the head coach of the New Orleans Saints, offered a third round pick for Romo a deal that owner Jerry Jones turned down. Later in that same offseason, Sean Payton and the Saints 
signed Drew Brees. And the rest is history. He became one of the best quarterbacks in NFL history during his tenure with the Saints. It really makes you wonder, if they brought Romo in, would they have still signed Drew Brees? Romo began the 2006 season after an amazing preseason. And he was more than just the holder. Tony had a legitimate chance to become the starting quarterback of the Cowboys. And on October 23rd, Tony Romo's career as a starter began. But ironically, it was against the New York Giants, a team that shares the same city and stadium as the New York Jets, the team that ended Drew Bledsoe's career as the starting quarterback for the New England Patriots, and now it was about to end for him in Dallas. Bledsoe, who was pulled after just one half in what was one of if not his worst performance in the NFL. Romo's first appearance wasn't as expected, as his first pass of the game was intercepted, one of three that he would toss that day. He went 14 for 25 with 227 yards and two touchdowns. Later that week, Romo was officially named the starter of the Dallas Cowboys. His first challenge was in primetime, Sunday Night Football versus the Carolina Panthers. Romo led the Cowboys to the win, as well as a playoff spot later in that season. Just the second of Parcell's tenure in Dallas. And Tony Romo was setting up for his playoff debut as the starting quarterback. And if you're a football fan, you know what happened in that game. The setting, Seattle, Washington, Seahawks vs. Cowboys, the 2006 Wild Card Weekend. Romo kept the Cowboys in it, and it went down to a go-ahead field goal with just over a minute remaining. Despite being the starting quarterback, he still handled the holding duties. And the play that people remember Tony Romo for the most that eliminated the Cowboys from the playoffs. He spotted by Romo at the nine. Ball was slippery, blah, blah, blah. They used a new ball, you know. Still gotta put it down. The crazy thing is, I thought I almost made it to the end zone. Romo went on to make the Pro Bowl that year, his first appearance of his career. In 2007, Tony signed a six-year, $67.5 million deal. In 2011, we saw who Tony Romo really was. In week two, he suffered a broken rib and punctured lung. He was in the locker room until the dying minutes of the third quarter when he came back onto the field, led a comeback, and forced overtime. And on the Cowboys' first possession, he led the team down the field, highlighted by a 77-yard pass to wide receiver Jesse Hawley to set up the game-winning field goal. He never missed a game due to that injury. Later that year, he suffered another injury, but started the next week with the division title on the line. Romo showed true aversity that year, and he had a great game, completing 29 of 37 with an injured throwing hand. But unfortunately, the Cowboys' defense couldn't hold the Giants, and they were eliminated from the playoffs. But that was the year the league saw how tough Tony Romo was. Unfortunately, it was also the start of a long list of injuries for number 9. In week 13 of 2012, Romo broke the Cowboys' franchise record for most career touchdown passes, previously held by one of the all-time greats and Hall of Famer, Troy Aikman. To say that was a big deal would be an understatement. With Romo's contract expiring, the Cowboys extended him to a six-year, $108 million deal, locking him up for the rest of his career. 
Unfortunately, Roma was plagued with injuries for the next year, but in 2014, he looked for one final Super Bowl run. In the wildcard game, he led the Cowboys to a second half comeback, and it was on to Green Bay, where he made what he said would have been the best throw of his life. The catch that never was. And to this day, right now in the NFL, that would be considered a catch. It was heartbreaking for the Cowboys fan base, and especially Tony Romo, as that would be the closest he'd ever get to winning a ring. The next season, Romo was sidelined for a majority of the year with a collarbone injury. And the very next year, Tony Romo suffered a career-ending back injury. He conceded the starting job to rookie Dak Prescott, and the rest is history. Tony Romo was the ultimate football nerd during his NFL career, but his story was far from over. Romo joined CBS as the head color analyst, since he has become one of the best analysts in all of sports. He signed a record-breaking contract worth $17 million and has helped open the door for other former players to become an analyst. Most recently, Drew Brees, joining NBC. Tony Romo had one of the best underdog stories in NFL history. He's an inspiration for all young analyst hopefuls, such as myself. A career like this makes you question, what if he stayed healthy? Tony Romo is the leading quarterback in Dallas Cowboys history. All he's missing is the Super Bowl. And with the football mind and IQ of Tony Romo, it makes you question if he'll one day attempt to make a comeback in the NFL, but as a coach. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure that you like and subscribe. Go check out my hockey channel. That's where I've been putting the most content, but this is a video I put a lot of work into. So if you could leave a like to help the algorithm, that would be very much appreciated. Let me know your thoughts on this story and also recommend players stories that I should break down next time in a video. I love reading the comments and seeing what you guys have to say, and I'm going to take more suggestions during this NFL offseason. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.